Hello, and welcome to the Explorers of Elsewhere Meet the Crew series. As you may have noticed, I am not DM Dan. He's sitting right next to me. I'm Carl Dudesh, one of the uh, members of the Explorers of Elsewhere, and I get the distinct pleasure of basically interviewing DM Dan for yeah. the player that he's going to be. <laughs> Although it's a little bit different, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it, this is a bit weird. It's like sitting in the passenger seat of your own car um <laughs> but yeah yeah uh we've we've gone through uh the five player characters that comprise the crew um but there is one arg arguably there is one character left that uh is very very important it is uh, the most important character because it makes up everything that happens and i guess yeah. i mean you know i guess atta could be kind of called the most important <laughs> character uh yeah. But Dan, who is this character we are talking about? So, uh, yeah, the the last kind of last character to speak about is Alicia herself. We uh, is... we need to meet Alicia. Yes, we do, and that's why I'm here because it would be really, really sort of inappropriate for you just to interview yourself. <laughs> oh. I tried it; it was a bit, it was a bit. It was dark. awkward for yeah. everyone. So, yeah. I am here to do that, and mm. I think. Probably the best place to start because we did go into a little bit of this on a tavern stream. Yes. But fundamentally, mm -hmm. what is Alicia? Uh, Alicia, sorry. What is Alicia? And what are the main districts that your players are going to be exploring? Sure. So, yeah, Alicia um, historically uh, was built by uh, a, an Ace of our great house. Uh, House Antelier, um, you know, many, 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 many years ago. Um, and House Antelier has been pretty good uh, up until recently, uh, <laughs> just over two years ago. Uh, a small, a somewhat small and insignificant war broke out. Um, no one remembers it. Nah, yeah, it may or may not have involved all of the gods. Um, and House Antelier uh, and uh, like the Ace of Var that reside that were part of house antelier as well as a number of other great houses decided to side with a calm the great betrayer um in order to keep their magical arcane powers um and this didn't sit too well with the people of elysia and they kind of shunted them off um they kicked them out of their own city and yeah elysia has been kind of devoted to the divine ever since and they looked forward to peaceful and prosperous lives up until the point where they were hurled into the void um whoops Oops. So, <clears throat> yes, um, it's not the entirety of Elysia that's uh, made it into Campaign 2. Um, in fact, it's just like a very kind of central bit. If we were to think of, say, London, um, it's like the congestion zone of, <laughs> as, as it's kind of been shunted out into um, the Sea of Souls. Um, so, yeah, just like the central bits. Um, so, yeah, there are 10. By my count, districts uh, yeah, that, within that is right, yeah. within uh, Elysia. So yeah, we'll just do a quick flyby through them uh, because we're going to introduce them in a bit more depth when we kind of see them yeah. um, in the flesh, so to speak. Um, so I would like to start us off. Uh, let's start off in Waterside. That's a nice little place. Yeah, um, sounds, so, sounds quite quaint. Yeah, I mean, if you were to picture a compass point, this is the south uh, west of the city, um, and. Waterside is almost like a, a community unto its own. They're they're a bit kind of separate from the rest of Elysia. Um, they kind of try to take life a bit more slowly. Um, they're a bit more. Uh, they, they are the country bumpkins of the city lifers. Um, <laughs> they are known for being a very kind of tight knit community, um, and they're kind of the, the reason why they're important on the map primarily is their marketplaces um mm -hmm. so a lot of kind of the eel farmers uh and the mushroom growers like uh, the mushrooms that are farmed they'll all get sold in the waterside markets um and yeah if, if you're looking for something um waterside is usually uh, usually a good spot to go to um going let's go clockwise so to the west of the of the bot of the sphere of the veil um is dustry hill so uh dustry hill as the name suggests uh, was a section of the city that was once upon a time built on a hill uh but now mm -hmm. all that's left of it is like a slope down from the edge of the of the sphere um once upon a time 
Um, Dustry Hill was the site of kind of the majority of Elysia's manufacturing and um, it's like industry. So the warehouse districts, effectively, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, Elysia was crucial in the war uh, because of its manufacturing output um, and a lot of that came from almost sort of like 24 hour work schedules pumping out through Dustry Hill um, so it was very fog, very kind of sooty, very smoky yeah. um, proper like L London like very, yeah. Victoria, Victorian Industrial Revolution. Yeah. yeah spot on but now um, the f a lot of the factories lie silent. There are no renewable. There are no non-renewable resources anymore. So the chimney stacks no longer billow smoke, uh, and a lot of the the factories, uh, well, the factories and workshops have been converted into massive mushroom farms. Because <laughs> when you There's haven't no got a, when you haven't got a sun, uh, and you've only got a ambient purple glow, sometimes you know some of the only things you can grow are mushrooms. Um, so yeah, Dustry Hill, um, still where a lot of people work. Uh, continue around, so northeast, uh, sorry, northwest, um, Old Town um, is a very kind of like, well, it's obviously, it's obviously the old part of um, Elysia. Um, it's very kind of higgledy-piggledy, lots of kind of narrow winding, like narrow alleyways and kind of tall buildings, I imagine, sort of like washing lines stretching the streets with clothes hanging on, <laughs> that sort of thing. I get, um, I, I see that, I see yeah, that image. Yeah, um, it's also a war zone. Um, <laughs> so basically Old Town is, the, the ownership of Old Town, uh, when we start with Campaign 2, is currently under dispute. Um, the faction that were uh, originally in charge, the Tellers, we'll come back to them later. Um, they've recently had a bit of a, a sudden and unexpected leadership change, um, and now everyone's kind of scrabbling for the top spot. Um, so yeah, a lot of kind of gang on gang warfare um, happening in Old Town. Uh, to the north of the city, uh, we have Celestry, um, named after um, a large and magnificent tree, which is now uh, dead and petrified. Um, Celestry is, if we go back to our London analogy, it is Soho. It is our okay. um, alternative entertainment district. <laughs> Very in keeping with with YouTube's. Uh... <laughs> yes, yes. I can't. We can't say nocturnal because there is no day or night cycle in Elysia. Um, but yes, it is where uh, you can go to relax and rewind. Uh, like, relax and unwind um, and there's like a lot of kind of hushed secrets whispered from ear to ear behind kind of you know trans semi-translucent veils and so on and so forth um, and there's there's a kind of uh, potentially see the occult kind of undertone that runs runs through these um, very labyrinthine um, alleyways all overlooked by what is dubbed uh lovers uh lovers crest lovers crest yes um which is sort of like to the north nearest the the, the barrier um and that's where a lot of the the artists and the um the musicians and the whatnot um tend to spend their time it's a bit more kind of organized. I think it's a district yeah in a sense um then uh carrying on round we have uh Haveny and Duskland. Uh, so this is an interesting one because it's it's kind of a district that is engulfs another. Uh, what was once Haveny and Duskland have since been conjoined into Haveny and Duskland. Uh, Carl and I will relate to this in a very Brighton and Hove kind of yeah, way. Yeah, I was going to say it's definitely reeks of home <laughs> that one. Yeah. Um, so uh, Haveny and Duskland is effectively where. Um, all the people that got money that weren't nobles started buying property. So it's almost like the gentrified part of, of town. Um, there's a bit more space, there's a bit more uh, luxury, as much as you can have it in this kind of apocalyptic hellscape the Elysians find themselves in. Um, uh, Haveny is more kind of homey, Duskland is more sort of like curious perhaps not entirely above board marketplace or service acquisitions um it was haveny actually right <laughs> dustland actually dustland actually yeah um <laughs> so yeah it's yeah it's, a, it's an interesting place um that 
in Haven in Dusklin in Compass, uh, a small district called the Ivory. Uh, the Ivory is once, uh, it's a walled kind of community, a walled section. Uh, once upon a time, the residences of House Antelier resided in the Ivory. Um, and ever since their uh, kind of the uprising against them and their eviction, um, a lot of these kind of grand manor house mansion type buildings um, have just kind of fallen into complete and utter um, disrepair. Uh, we heard from Nate that. Uh, as part of uh, Catherine's backstory that the church was quite uh, the, the faith was quite in, complicit in um, kind of vilifying the area and kind of seeding it with superstition so a lot of people don't try try not to go there but you'll find that a lot of the residences have now become a haven for squatters and people yeah. that can't afford to live anywhere else but there are a lot of spoopy creepy things happening um, in the ivory uh, finally, in the south, well, sorry, carrying on in the south uh, east, we have Rook Ridge. Um, so, Rook Ridge is the other district that straddles um, the large river, the, the kind of the 90 degrees river that runs through the city. Um, Rook Ridge is effectively Elise's slum, like a lot yeah. of uh, the workers who can't afford to live in Dustry Hill or Old Town have found themselves in Rook Ridge. Um, a lot of um, people that uh, were displaced with when the shield went up and parts of Alicia were cut off and found themselves in Rookridge. It's very cramped, it's very hot, it's very noisy, yeah, think, very claustrophobic. I think when you sort of explained it, we sort of, sort of mm. Kowloon City was quite yes. a good sort of like example of, of what it's like. Yes, yeah. Very, weirdly, very little privacy, but quite a lot of secrets. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Rookridge. Uh, We'll, we'll jump back to sort of like central north. So Abbot's Gate um, lies uh, kind of between Old Town, Celestry, and Haveny. Um, it is the site of the first uh, like major cathedral to the Ire. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like or, around it, government type buildings have, have kind of sprung up. Um, so it's where a lot of the kind of clerk and official type work happens. Uh, they kind of kept it all into one, again, walled area. Um, immediately south of that, in the centre of the city, um, is Spire Park. Um, this is where you'll find the keep, where uh, our prosperous leader, uh, Marshal Gion, uh, Gion Algarve, uh, resides uh, and rules over Elysia with a relatively iron fist. Um, but that's also where all of the the nobles and um, well, effectively, it's the nobles. It's the Mayfair Monopoly yeah. Square of Elysia. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's got uh, a, and within that area, you've got a big park that's got a statue that was erected to commemorate the ousting of House Antelier. So it's a relatively new statue, um, uh, but the rest of the park is now dead because there's no sun. So, um, <laughs> and the final district on the other side of the river, directly across from uh, Spire Park, is Saints Hollow, um, which is beautifully named because uh, the primary landmark of Saints Hollow is the prison. Um, so, Bell Tower, Bell Tower Prison, um, it's almost directly connected to the ghetto uh, that's kind of just off it. Um, but a lot of people in Elysia will find themselves in a very, very vicious cycle of yeah. um, doing time in Bell Tower to then find themselves in the ghetto to find themselves not able to um, yeah. not commit crime and end up back, back in Bell, Bell Tower. Um, but there's also, for the really unlucky prisoners, um, there is an area in St. Hollows called The Descent, uh, which is a manned effectively a manned hole into the sewer systems beneath Elysia um, and not everyone who goes in comes out mm, shady mm. business shady business so yeah they, they are the 10, 10 districts and very quickly if we have time to uh, it's been discussed at a tavern but I know you're going to probably get arse loads where does the water come from <laughs> so <laughs> yeah the, there is I say there's a, there's a big old river and we're, we're talking sort of like Thames ish size. Um, basically, like the, the physics of it is the water that was trapped in Elysia when the bubble went up 
whenever that touches uh, the edge of the of the veil, it effectively evaporates up to the top of the sphere, where it precipitates back down as a fine drizzle, uh, which means it is always drizzling in Delicia. So bring your umbrellas. Yes. Uh, so no city exists in a vacuum. No. Well, I guess this one kind of. Well, this does. one does. Yeah. This yeah. one kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, but there are people going to be living here, and I think the next major question is. Who are the factions that are vying yeah. for control of this city? Because, as you said, there are gang wars, there's going to be people who want control, and our players are just one of those, but who are the main shakers and movers sure. of, of Alicia? So, uh, beyond, obviously, the, the, the player characters, um, they, they would kind of have a gang unto themselves. Um, but, yeah, there are five primary factions uh, that are running amok through Elysia. Um, starting with the status quo, um, dubbed the Guard, Mm -hmm. The Guard are the ones in control. They are um, Marshal, Algarve's people. Um, and they have maintained this like power through the martial law that was implemented during the war um, before Elysia was lost. Um, the Guard comprise of the City Watch, who are uh, known to be the most violent and cruel gang in Elysia. Um, and they will have various kind of... like They're spread across all of the districts um, in a very... Uh, very kind of brutal policing um, kind yeah. of way because uh, they're all like the vast majority of the city watch are now corrupt because quite frankly they can be yeah no um, one to stop them no one to stop them um, there's also the black guard um, who are Algarve's personal bodyguards um, they thankfully tend to only be seen in and around um, like the keep in Spire Park um, but they are intimidatingly formidable fighters um, with perhaps a bit um, of magical prowess that kind of gives them some advantages in certain situations that's certainly not to be trifled with um, and finally the EIC the Elysian Intelligence Corps um, they are like the secret police they are um, the spies um, once upon a time uh, Algonon was part of EIC he was um but now they they serve to kind of root out any kind of insurrectionists or anyone who would disrupt the harmony of elysia um the i would argue the broadest uh gang next to them then is the underworld um so these are the sort of like the organized criminal elements within the city um there are rumours that the, the the gang, if you will, that kind of heads up the underworld are called the Marionettes. Um, they're a somewhat um, mysterious, somewhat reclusive, well, secretive um, group of you know individuals who ne'er-do-wells, ne'er-do-wells, yes, who seemingly um, seemingly are able to kind of control all of the organised crime within the city. Um, despite being relatively few in number, um, you have uh, like some of the gangs underneath them have banded together in a coalition known as the Cobbles. So the Cobbles are quite spread out. Um, a number of, like a lot of gangs, will fly the Cobbles flag as well as their own gang name, um, and they are um, <laughs> they are effectively your run of the mill criminal gang member like they're, 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 they're with the cobbles you'll find that it's most likely honest people having to do dishonest work yeah. um, on the flip side to that you have the Ilneishi uh, which are a Majani crimes family um, and once upon a time that family used to almost have a monopoly on um, the sale of gold within the city uh, but now um, from their sort of like fortress um like complex house setup type thing um they now kind of lean into they're leaning into some of their criminal origins um and there are a lot of kind of hushed whispers uh, about the uh, occult practices that they get up to in order to maintain their um their sort of like their power um the sopranos if they did magic yeah sopranos meets Salamancas from Breaking Bad meets, yeah, 
the yeah, Salem witches. Um, so uh, we have the faith. Uh, so as we know, um, Elysia was once um, kind of offered to a Khan before the people rose up and ousted House Antelir. Um, in its place, uh, worship of Aya and the Divine Dragons um, took a strong hold throughout the city, um, which is something that the Faith has direct access to. Um, so the Faith is he spearheaded uh, by the children of Aya, who operate out of um, the Cathedral of our uh, Glorious Mother, in Abbot's Gate, mm -hmm. um, and they do everything they can to ensure that uh, Aya's messages of light and order um, are kind of remembered through the city. Um, but, but perhaps because of the environment they find themselves in, they might have, they might have gotten a bit, a bit too, a bit too zealous, a bit too pushy with it. Um, you have the garden keepers who are considerably more moderate. They worship um, Gogoldin, the Wild Heart, um, one of Aya's children, and uh, they are a relatively small religious sect that are trying to kind of keep separate from Aya's, like the children of Aya, um, and they're trying their very, very best to preserve what is left. Um, in Elysia from a kind of a nature point of view because there's been two years of very, very little sustenance, no light, etc, etc. Yeah. Um, and then counter to them, if we thought the children of Aya were a bit pushy, um, you have the Shield of Elysia, um, who are worshippers of Yala, the uh, Castellum. Mm -hmm. um, so once upon a time Yala's teachings uh, were about kind of defending and protecting oneself um, you know it, it was a, a mix of war and peace um, but the shield of Elysia have kind of taken these uh, teachings and applied it in a somewhat more aggressive stance where they will they are very zealously seeking out any threats to the integrity of the sphere that protects Elysia from uh, the ravenous ghosts on the outside um Next up, we have the pillars. So the faith was quite important to Elysia, uh, but Elysia was also still a very profitable and industrious city. Um, so the pillars are kind of an alliance of the nobles and the like, the rich, yeah, um, like the upper tier, the the upper class, if you will. Um, money, even in Elysia, is still quite important. Um, so you find that the chain bearers. Um, are front and foremost in the pillars. Um, they are uh, a group of what was once sort of like all of the, the factory owners and property owners and so on and so forth. Um, and they're all symbolised uh, with a gold chain, which you know symbolises their status. Hence, hence the name. Um, you've got uh, the tellers. So the tellers have were recently quite a powerful faction until until recently, um, where their leader has been found um, not not very alive. <laughs> um, bereft of life. Bereft of life. Uh, once upon a time, uh, well, the Tellers are were the bankers of Elysia, um, and they've kind of managed to stake their claim by offering a very neutral money protection service. Effectively, they are the bank still. Yeah. Um, and that, that kind of neutrality is what gave them power. Uh, but there are s whispers that perhaps they haven't been as neutral as they could have been. Um, <laughs> they also run a lot of uh, illegal gambling rings, which may or may not have tied into the previous statement. Um, and then you also have, like, whereas though the chain bearers and the tellers are quite public, you have the lodge reticent. They are very um, secluded, very discreet. They are a cabal of... Um, nobles that are trying to pull the string, whatever strings they need to pull to ensure that um, a very particular way of life is maintained uh, within Elysia, regardless of what's happening. Um, and some of those methods uh, veer very, very heavily into the arcane and occult, um, something that the Lodris are more than happy to do um, if it means that they can keep, you know, they keep yeah, their, they keep foot their up. control. Exactly. Um, kind of lastly, uh, a relatively new faction, if you will, are the Forsworn. 
Um, so these are the people that uh, Alicia has turned her back on. Um, these are a, a lot of people within Alicia will see the Force Warn as like extremists mm -hmm. um, or, or holding ideas that don't massively align with the rest of the population. <laughs> uh, for example, the foremost faction within uh, that group are called the Kindling, um, which are a fundamentally um, like nihilistic faction that believe that Elysia is rotten to her core. Uh, mm. And the only way for Elysia to thrive again is to burn out the rot. Um, so that, you know, they, they yeah. seek to do that. Um, purity, by, purity by fire. Exactly, exactly. Um, you also have um, the hollow, uh, which are, um, it is whispered that there are there is a small group of sort of like scientists and or like crazed alchemists who believe that uh, kind of surviving in our current state just isn't working um and in order for elysia to move on um the people of elysia need to adapt to fit their new surroundings um so there are there are hushed whispers that they're trying to find out if it's possible to transport the soul into new bodies um, in order to survive in a place like this um, and finally the orchestra uh, which very very little is known um, the numbers and members are unknown but um, there are panicked retellings like recountings of grisly and uh, ritual like ritualistic murders um, happening through the city um and sort of like ear witnesses um, like know something's up when they hear a very distinct uh, whistled tune um, moments before um, like a murder is committed mm -hmm. um, but yeah uh, the, the motives the motives are unknown um, and truly last but not least uh, a sixth kind of sort of faction are the people um, so the citizens, uh, the press, uh, the messengers, like all of, e like everyone within Elysia who doesn't fall in one of those five main factions. Um, because the, the people, like whilst they may not have power per se, um, can still be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, and I think they're the ones the players should be most going after, I imagine. Potentially, potentially. I mean, yeah, it's like, it'll be the, the public perception faction if you will the court of public opinion yes precisely yeah. precisely but yeah so that is it there are so if we include the people uh 18 factions wow in play so it's getting pretty cluttered in, in a the little city. bit yes and the players will find out very quickly that there it will be very very difficult to curry favor with one faction without stepping on at least one other's one other faction's toes so yeah we're going to see how they delicately navigate that kind of this geopolitical <laughs> the socio-political mess oh, I, I imagine by the end of it every faction will hate them but we'll see mm. how that goes but speaking about the players yes obviously they're within the city as well yeah. and they've got to have somewhere to to rest their head at night and you were pretty cagey about this when when we had a tavern recently but have they finally established a hideout? And if they have, whereabouts is it? Yes, yes. So uh, the the gang, the crew have have sort of like finalised uh, the hideout and their hunting grounds. Um, so uh, off the back of his uh, rather fortunate uh, slash very unfortunate um, backstory. Um, the crew have now established themselves um, in the shallow, in the hollow shell of Cadwallader Manor. So, Algonon's nice. and like Algonon's birth home, like family home mm -hmm. um, that was given to him after his, um, like when he became an orphan um, at the tender age of thirteen. Um, now that he's kind of trapped in Elysia, he's returned to the manor and has converted it into um, his hideout. Nice. For, well, the hideout for, for the crew as a whole. Um, and they've already begun uh, renovations uh, to aid in their um, 
kind of smuggling jobs from here on out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so Cadwallader Manor is where they will is a place where they can call home, a place where they can sleep at night, um, and that's in mm -hmm. the Ivories. Mm -hmm. So in the shadow of the buildings of House Antelia. Mm -hmm. And you said they also picked up a hunting ground. Yes. So um, kind of bordering. Uh, on the ivory uh, just a little bit south if you tread into the streets of Duskland, um you will so Haveny and Duskland, uh you will find a a tavern a rather small corner tavern uh, called the Spectre um it's relatively unassuming uh, by comparison to uh, all the other drinking places throughout Alicia um but there are rumors that there is a secret entrance to a speakeasy that lies underneath uh, where people can um, request, trade, barter, uh, consume um, any sort of arcane-influenced contraband um, that is now <laughs> illegal throughout the city, but still in high demand, um, whether these are uh, legitimate or not? Whether they're well, they're, yeah, yeah, probably not legitimate. But whilst we can very quickly imagine of the sort of shadier things that people might ask on a an arcane black market, um, things like health potions also mm. lie uh, on the, on that list. So, yeah, there's a lot of desperate people that will find themselves um, in the secret parts of the spectre, um, which are watched over by a very kind of warm-hearted um, red-eyed Sangravar um, with a presumably more than one story to tell. Um, but yeah, the, the streets of Duskland uh, will be where the, the, the crew initially start off um, and we'll see how far through the city they expand over the space of the campaign. And finally, do they have a gang name, or is that to be decided? That is still to be decided. I or... they've got they've got twenty sessions to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, this sounds like this city is so well thought out, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic to see the players interacting with these, mm. uh, well, these factions with these districts, yeah. uh, and to really get themselves involved in the mystery of. Alicia. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say, so for anyone who's um, played traditional Blades in the Dark, um, there may have been a few things that are suspiciously similar um, to the districts and communities of Duskfall, <laughs> the, the core um, Blades in the Dark uh, like setting. Um, but yeah, I think that's more kind of evidence towards how good a, a setting Duskfall and Blades of the Dark um, is um, but you know, a lot of it was just kind of recategorizing and renaming. Um, but yeah, the city. Uh, I'd like to think that Elysia feels like ours, um, but it still feels like a, a very vibrant. Well, not vibrant. It's not vibrant at all. Um, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> dying slowly. Yeah, <laughs> it is quite the opposite of vibrant. <laughs> it is one of the cities of all time. Yeah, um, in its current state. Um, no, it's. I'm, I'm going to be excited. There's a lot of kind of complexity and intrigue that run through the streets uh, and again we'll see I say how the crew deal with it when they collide headfirst with it well if you liked what you heard uh make sure you hit that like button down below and maybe comment on which of the districts you would like or maybe not like to find yourself in <laughs> uh once you've done that hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell to keep yourself notified as to when episodes of this brand new campaign are coming out. And once you've done that, if you're feeling wonderful, create a new account and do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, thanks for letting me uh, do this for you. Um, Thank you for think, interviewing. Oh, you're quite welcome. It's uh, It's been fun. And that closes out the uh, Meet the Crew series. So thank you for watching. And I guess we'll see you in Alicia. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.